Hey, you guys. Okay, some more Greek myths coming up. Today, I'm going to start reading to you about Melager and the Blazing Log. One bitter wintry night, the servants of King Onius of Caledon came running to their master with good news. His wife, Queen Althea, had produced a fine son for him, a thing to make the whole of Caledon rejoice. For everyone knew the king was longing for an heir. The newborn child named Maleager by his parents was wrapped up in blankets and sheepskin and put in a cradle next to his mother's bed. The queen looked anxiously at the tiny bundle. He mustn't feel cold in the night, she fretted. Put another log on the fire, nurse, to keep it warm till morning. The nurse did as she was told and then left the mother bending over from her bed to gaze into her son's face in the firelight. Althea was sinking back to rest when she thought she saw figures in the room. I must be dreaming, she thought, for no one has come through the door. Yet three women, their faces hidden in gray cloaks, were seated by the fire. Althea recognized them with a chill of fear. These were the three terrible sisters, the fates, who at the moment of our birth begin to spin the thread of our life and who will fix the moment of its end by breaking off the thread. The first sister began the spinning by drawing out raw wool from the bundle on her distaff and twisting it into thread. This child shall be brave and handsome, she said. He shall be bold, too bold, and very quick to anger, said the second, winding the new thread onto a bobbin. But he shall live no longer, said the third, than that blazing log shall burn upon the hearth. She drew a pair of scissors from beneath her cloak and sat waiting to cut the thread. In an instant, Althea leapt from her bed and thrust her hand into the flames. She drew out the log, plunged it into a jug of water, wrapped the blackened wood in a cloth, and locked it away in a chest. When this was done, she saw that daylight was already chasing away the shadows. The fates had vanished, and the baby slumbered peacefully in his crib. Malager grew up to be a handsome and brave young man, just as the fates foretold. He loved all sports and outdoor competitions, racing, wrestling, and hunting, and was reckoned to be the best javelin thrower in Greece. The time came when his country badly needed his skills. Its people were suffering under a terrible punishment sent by the goddess Artemis for something that really was not their fault. King Oneus had been thoughtless. He had forgotten to include Artemis in his yearly sacrifices to the Olympian gods. The furious goddess decided to punish the land of Caledon. She sent an enormous boar to devastate the land, a huge brute, larger than a bull. Its tusks were like an elephant's. The crest along its back bristled like a row of spears. Its breath scorched roots and branches. It raged up and down the kingdom, tearing and trampling everything in its path. It turned forests to cinder, flattened corn and gored cattle and people. Villagers threw their belongings into carts and fled to the city. Malager announced that he would fight this boar, a suggestion that horrified his father, for it was clear the boar was far too terrible for even the bravest warrior to tackle on his own. The king had a better solution. He sent heralds to all the courts of Greece, inviting the bravest fighters in the land to come to Caledon and join Prince Malager in a glorious boar hunt. Whoever struck the blow that killed the beast should be allowed to keep its hide and tusks as trophy. From all over Greece, men eager for glory arrived for the hunt. Theseus came from Athens and Jason from Iaclus, and many others, including Malager's two uncles, the brothers of Althea. Among the arrivals was a tall, fair stranger carrying a bow and ivory quiver. When he took off his traveling hat, a mass of tumbling golden curls fell around his shoulders, proving to everyone's astonishment that this was a woman. Her name was Atalanta, daughter of the king of Arcadia. To Malager, her combination of beauty and hunting prowess was irresistible, and he fell in love with her at once. King Onius entertained the hunters well. They feasted for nine days and nights and Artemis heard their shouts and laughter. She knew they were planning the death of her boar and she laid plans to spoil their hunt. 
she soured the hunters' tempers and made them quarrelsome. Malager's uncles grumbled that a hunt was no place for a woman. We haven't come here to play women's games, they said. She should go home. They smirked to see Malager turn crimson with rage, for it was obvious to everyone that he was smitten with the stranger, while she took no notice of him at all. Still angry in their hearts, the hunters set off on the tenth day, some armed with bows and arrows, others with boar spears, javelins, or axes, all keen to be the one that struck the death blow. The boar was found lurking by a stream amongst some willows. It bounded out, killing two huntsmen and sending others scrambling for safety. It would have done more damage if Atalanta had not let fly an arrow that sank deep into the folds of its neck. It roared with rage and charged again, but Malager flung his javelin into its right flank, and as it whirled about in pain, he drove his hunting spear into its heart. Malager had killed the boar and won the trophy, its hide and tusks. But when the beast was skinned, he presented these to Atalanta. You were the first to wound the boar, he said, and if I had not interfered, you would have killed it. Then everyone began to argue. They said this was against the sporting rules. If, a winner, if the winner wished to give his prize away, he had to offer it to the huntsman of the highest rank. In this case, it should go to Malager's elder uncle, brother-in-law to the king. The uncle snatched the hide from Atalanta, and Malager, furious at the insult to his loved one, attacked him in a blind rage. His brother joined the fight. Knives were drawn, and Malager killed his uncles. Althea saw two corpses carried in a sad procession through the city gates. She recognized her brothers and was told they had been murdered. She raised her hands to heaven. Who is their murderer, she demanded. By the gods, I swear I shall not rest until I see him dead. It is your son, they said. Not pausing to allow herself an instant's thought, Althea ran to the chest, seized the blackened log, and threw it on the fire. She watched it burn until it was a heap of ash. Malager, returning from the hunt, was seized with pains like fire. He fell to the ground and was carried home dead by his hunting companions. Okay, let me show you some of the pictures. There's just a few. Here are the fates, the ladies. Let me share this video with you. There you go. Those are the fates. So they're the ones who um, decide. They're, they're three sisters and they weave your life into like thread and then they cut it when you're gonna die. Here is, that would be Atalanta and maybe Artemis, I'm not sure, with the boar. So maybe it's actually um, uh, Malager. Okay, and then the last picture. It is Althea, and she's putting that log on the fire, and it ends up killing her son that she does that. Okay, I hope you uh, enjoyed this story. I'm going to go ahead and record you another one. Okay, talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.